Welcome back to the Mech Tech Tech. Today we have our second pre-con upgrade guide from Duskmorn, featuring Miracle Worker, helmed by Aminatu Veil Piercer. So, Aminatu is a 4 cost 2 4. Beginning of your upkeep, you will surveil 2. The surveil 2 is actually super helpful. It's going to help us set up the second half of their effect, which is that every enchantment in your hand has Miracle. Its miracle cost is basically just its normal cost reduced by 4 generic mana. So, Miracle, for those of you who weren't around for it back in the day, is whenever you first draw a card, if it's the first one you've drawn that turn, you can cast it for its miracle cost. So, what is our game plan with Aminatu? Well, we really want more enchantments. I've actually designed an entire precon of my own around her, uh, which I'll put a link to in the description if you want to go check that out. I've done a whole video on it. But we really want to make sure we're drawing not only on our own turn, but on everyone's turn at least once. And we want to be manipulating the top of our deck as we're doing so, to ensure that we're always casting a miracle. Now, as always, we are going to be cutting out 10 cards from this deck and adding in 10 cards to replace them, raising the synergy, and trying to win a little more consistently, a little faster, and in new and interesting ways. Let's go over the cards that didn't quite make that cut, starting off with Ponder. So Ponder is a single blue for a sorcery, which is its biggest issue. It lets you look at the top three cards of your library, put them back in any order. You could choose to shuffle, and then you're going to draw a card. If this were an instant speed, I would love it. It would be great. Uh, the fact that it's at sorcery speed means we can only do it on our own turn. Only after we've already drawn a card for turn. So no miracles here, so Ponder had to go. Burnished Heart. Uh, Burnished Heart just felt like a generically fine card in the deck. Um, cuts are a little rough. I feel like these pre-cons are coming out pretty well built. So a generically okay card is an easy cut for us. Spirit Sister's Call. So this is a new enchantment from Duskmorn. Uh, your end step, you get to choose a permanent in your grave. You could sacrifice something that shares a type with it to cheat it back. The permanent that you cheat back gains, if this would leave the battlefield, instead exile it. Um, so it's effectively a finality counter type effect, but without the counter, making it basically impossible to interact with. Sad Robot follows them up, another generically fine card that we're okay to cut. Cast Out. So Cast Out is 4 mana. You could flash it out as an enchantment, you could also choose to cycle it away. Uh, the fact that you could cycle it makes it a little stronger than some of these other cuts. Um, but that's okay. I think the replacements are going to more than make up for it. Uh, but this is one of those effects that I just really don't love. And it's whenever it enters, you exile a thing and opponent controls only until it leaves the field. Are your opponents running mass and shaman removal? Probably not. Even so, I just feel like we have stronger effects out there. You know, for less mana, we could just exile something permanently. And I'm okay with getting rid of this one. Telling Time. So Telling Time is an instant for one in the blue. You look at the top three cards of your library. You put one to your hand, leave one on top, and bottom one. You might be thinking, Mech, that sounds great. Why aren't we keeping that? I'll tell you why we're not keeping it. It's because you're putting the card in your hand, you're not drawing it. <laughs> and yeah, there's a difference. You know, like... I really genuinely wish it was force the bottom one, put two on top in any order, then draw a card. If that were the case, I'd keep this on a heartbeat, but that's not the way the card is worded, so that's not the way it works. Read the Bones. So Read the Bones is a sorcery speed draw card, so we already don't like it. It does scry us two before we draw cards, which normally is great, and if we had a way of doing this at instant speed, we'd keep it. But the scry two, then draw two, means we're not setting up any miracles. The two lights that it costs in addition to the two and a black to cast is incidental and fine. Uh, but, you know, we're really trying to set up those miracles and get them as often as possible. Phenomenon Investigators. So this is a new card from Duskmorn. It's a human detective. It's a 3-4 four for 4 mana. When it enters, you choose to either believe or doubt. If you believe, whenever a non-token creature you control dies, you get to create a 2-2 black horror enchantment token. 
I think that's actually a decent enough effect in very specific enchantment decks, just not this one. Uh, if you choose to doubt, at the beginning of your end step, you get to return a non-land permanent you own to your hand, and if you do, you're going to draw a card. Uh, so we like card draw in general, but again, we're looking to always have a draw on each individual player's turn, and not a bunch on our own. So I felt pretty good about cutting it. Commander Sphere is 3 for 3 in terms of generically okay cards in a deck. Uh, this is a 3 color deck. Yes. This is a 3 color deck, and so like some people would argue, oh, Commander Sphere is pretty decent in 3 colors, da 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 da. I'd rather play Arcane Signet. I'd rather improve my mana base overall than play Commander Sphere. I really don't think that a 3 mana artifact that's going to tap for a single color is as good as we need it to be in, you know, what Commander has become. Last of our cuts is Auromancer. So Auromancer is a 2-2 two, two for 3. Not great stats. Whenever it enters, you could return an enchantment from your grave to hand, which isn't bad if we had some of the more honorable mention expensive-y kind of things. Uh, I think we could have the option of keeping it, uh, but without those, you know, I don't think it's as strong as it needs to be to stick around, so we are going to cut it. Now, with those 10 cards out of the way, we do need to move into the 10 cards that are going to replace them, and we're going to start off with a little Consider. So, Consider is instant speed, single blue mana, we're going to surveil one, then draw a card. So, is the card we're surveilling an enchantment or something that we really feel like we can't afford to lose? If yes, leave on top. Otherwise, throw it in the grave. We don't care. The fact that it's instant speed is going to let us draw a card on an opponent's turn, which will give us another chance at having those miracles, right? We only get that miracle the first card we draw each turn. Starfield of Nyx. So, five mana enchantment. Being of upkeep, you can return an enchantment from your grave to the battlefield. So, you know, we're surveilling a lot in this deck, you know, both through Aminatu and a couple other cards. So if we're filling our grave, we can cheat them back for free. Once we control at least five non-aura enchantments, I don't think we actually have any in this deck. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure we don't. So basically, five enchantments. All of our enchantments become creatures in addition to their other types with power and toughness equal to their mana value. So, you know, we're cheating out miracle enchantments. They're becoming creatures. They're big and beefy. And we're going to hopefully smash face with them. Omniscience is just a prime candidate for being miracled out, right? Normally 10 mana. Expensive, but worth it. If we can get out for 6 mana, maybe even a little less, with a few other enchantment reducers. Uh, you know, we're really just going purely to value town. And with that Starfield of Nyx, we have a 10-10 on the field. Grim Guardian. So Grim Guardian is a 3-cost black enchantment zombie. So we could miracle them, right? We actually really like enchantment creatures in this deck just as much as we enjoy the regular enchantments. Uh, whenever they or another enchantment enters the battlefield under our control, each opponent is going to lose one life. We're not draining, we're just um, little pings, you know, but I feel like they're generically good enough for this enchantment deck where we're aiming to play ideally four enchantments per round. You know, is that realistic? Probably not with the number of enchantments in the deck, um, though there are a fair number of them, so it could happen. Mystic Remora. So Mystic Remora, unfortunately, is never going to get the benefit of the Miracles, um, but they are a generically good way of saying, hey, I'm going to draw cards on everyone else's turn, right? I'm going to draw a card on your turn, and your turn, and your turn, and hopefully... At least one of those is going to be set up to be a nice little miracle for me. Moving beyond the Mystic Remora, we have Opt. Another single blue, right? We love it. We're going to scry one instead of surveil one, and then we're going to draw a card. The fact that we're doing it at instant speed is giving us access to that card draw on an opponent's turn. Hollowed Haunting. So Hollowed Haunting is great. Four mana, we could get out as cheapest tool for doing the miracle thing. Once we control at least seven or more enchantments... All of our creatures have Flying and Vigilance. You combine this with the Starfield of Nyx, and now we have these massive enchantments, which are flying around with evasion, right? We're getting past all of our opponent's defenses. They're vigilant. 
They're standing strong, ready to defend our life total from our opponents. It's a win-win. In addition to this, whenever we cast an enchantment spell, we get to create a spirit. That spirit's power and toughness are equal to the number of spirits we control. You know, so again, if we're, if we're set up correctly, we're doing things well, we're going to get four spirits around. Three on the first time, you know, because we, we won't get the effect necessarily uh, the turn we cast this for ourselves. Uh, and then from there, we just have these big flying spirits. And they are beaten face. Brain Surge is going to follow that up. So Brain Surge is from Modern Horizons 3. It is a 3 cost instant. We draw 4, put 2 back on top in any order. So it is important to note that whenever any sort of spell has you draw multiple cards, it is technically several instances of draw 1. So only the very first card of the 4 that you draw is going to have the chance to be a miracle. But the fact that we get to choose two cards from our hand to put back on top is going to let us set up future miracles. Frantic Search is up next. So Frantic Search is three mana, but effectively free, because we're going to draw two, discard two, untap three lands. So effectively for free, assuming we had the mana open, we're going to draw two cards, discard two cards, Starfield of Nyx is going to cheat them back for us later, don't worry about it, and we're going to untap some lands, it's a good time. Last of our budget additions is Xur Eternal Schemer. So Xur is a 1-4 flyer for 3 mana. Enchantment creatures we control have Death Touch, Lifelink, and Hexproof, all of which are great. We can pay 1 and a white to give target non or enchantment. Uh, just basically turn it into a creature, basically a Starfield of Nyx style effect. And it's not until end of turn. That is just a permanent change to what that card is and what it does. Uh, so we love it. It's phenomenal. Now, of course, there are a couple other cards we could add into this deck. You know, Rhystic Study is a great addition. Smothering Ties is great, right? We're going to have the mana to constantly afford to pay for all this stuff. Uh, Scroll Rack and Sensei's Divining Top are both great at manipulating the top of our deck repeatedly to ensure that we're always set up for those miracles. But guys, that's the deck tech overall. I think that the changes make sense, are highly synergistic, and are going to lead us to many, many victories among other pre-cons that have been upgraded at the table. But as always, I'm Mechanized Minion, aka the Energy King, and until next time, good luck with your builds.